welcome back to my channel. So today I'm doing an overview of the Yves Saint Laurent, the YSL fragrances for women. I'm going to go through their most popular ones, their main ranges, as well as perhaps some lesser known ones and my favourite discontinued ones as well. If you are new here, then hello, welcome. I'm all about perfumes. I have hundreds of videos like this, going through whole ranges, new releases, perfume notes, perfumers. So do check out my other content. And if you're a regular viewer, do make sure you're subscribed and give the video a thumbs up, that really helps me. And I will leave the links down below in the description box to where you can get all the fragrances I talk about in this video. If there are discontinued ones that I can find online, I'll leave the links there as well, for where you can get them all around the world. Cool. So YSL Beauty is owned by L'Oreal, it's part of L'Oreal, so most perfume brands license out their name to a company like L'Oreal who then are in charge of coming up with the perfumes, creating them, distributing them, marketing, etc. And um, so they're part of the L'Oreal family which of course is an absolutely massive company. And probably their most famous, most successful range at the moment is the YSL Libre range which has Dua Lipa as the face of the fragrance. These bottles have the YSL Gold logo on them, kind of like the bags and these are really good perfumes. So Libre is a white floral orange blossom jasmine with a quite calming lavender note in and a vanilla base. It performs really well and the intense version of this is um, definitely the best in the range. It's the one that people rave about. I um, travelled with a girl who was wearing this and every day I could always smell it on her, really projected, um, very warm, quite sexy, quite sophisticated. There is a Le Parfum version of it which again is heavier and quite sweeter and my personal favourite is the Eau de Toilette that I have here because it really majors on the orange blossom notes so it's really orangey, fresh. Um, really nice for the summer but the jasmine is still there which helps give it body and last and to me this performs like a typical eau de parfum rather than an, like an eau de toilette. I can smell this on me, it projects, it's a good orange blossom fragrance. More recently they released um, Libre Platine in the silver bottle. This one was quite a surprise, it's totally different to the rest of the Libre range. It has an aldehyde note as the main note, which is the main note in Chanel number no. 5. Quite airy, almost chemical medicinal smell. And then there's a lot of citrus in there and some of the lavender. For me this um, is a very, very gender neutral fragrance. In fact, there are lots of men's fragrances that major on lavender and citrus, so it almost felt like a men's scent. Totally different to the rest of the range and I'm not sure how well it's done. They are constantly releasing limited edition bottle versions of Libre, but those five are the only different fragrances that they have. And then we move on to the Black Opium range, which has also been a really big success. For me, Black Opium is an evening, party, date night, going out, bar type fragrance. And again, it projects and lasts really well. Again, we have an orange blossom white floral notes in here, but there's also um, a coffee bean undertone. It's quite fun, a little bit fruity, really, really strong. Um, definitely something I recommend for like the party season, for evenings. There are a lot of different versions of Black Opium. You've got Black Opium Extreme, which has more coffee notes in. You've got Black Opium Illicit Green, which has a hint of a fig and a green note in. You've got Black Opium Neon, which has a bit of a dragon fruit top note. But those all have that same Black Opium DNA with a slight twist to them, but they're still all 80% smell the same to me. You then have Black Opium Le Parfum, which is different. This is quite a warm um, orange blossom with a lovely like warm solar note which is very calming, very classy. I do love orange blossom so this is like a really pretty subtle orange blossom, the Le Parfum. And then there are a bunch of discontinued ones. Floral Shock, Black Opium Floral Shock, I really like that. Again it had a lot of orange blossom in. There was an intense version that came in a blue bottle that had licorice in, that is gone. And there was an Eau de Toilette version of it as well, that's gone. There was Nuit Blanche. And then there's been loads of limited edition bottle versions of Black Opium, um, which are just the same signature 
original scent in a limited edition bottle. So the next range we come to is YSL Mon Paris. Um, this has been a favorite of mine for a long time and I think it's a really underrated range from YSL. All the attention goes to the two big ones. And the original Mon Paris Eau de Parfum was a big inspiration behind my first fragrance, Empress. It is a fruity floral with red berries, rose, peony, and a patchouli base that really helps this last. It's really like feminine, pretty. I really like it and I find it performs really, really, really well and really lasts. And it just smells so pretty and feminine, but still lasting. That peony comes through, the rose is very modern. I really rate it. And if you like Empress, I think you'll definitely like this. Empress is heavy and stronger than this, but it's just such a great fragrance and you can usually get it really discounted because like no one talks about it. There is an intense version called Intensement. This one has black currant note in, a little bit more patchouli. Again, it's amazing for lasting. And then they have one called Mon Paris Lumiere, which is much brighter, lighter, a bit citrusy, delicate white florals. Doesn't really have the DNA of the original Mon Paris. But honestly, Mon Paris is just so feminine and pretty. I just did that one spray and it, I can really, really smell it. It really projects and lasts. Um, I think it's a great value for money and I hope they don't discontinue the Mon Perry range. And then lastly, we have YSL Opium, the original Opium. So black Opium is more modern, comes in this black bottle, but there was an original Opium from the 80s. This has been reformulated since the 80s and it currently just comes in an Eau de Toilette and an Eau de Parfum version. This is a heavy amber, fragrance with things like myrrh in, quite Middle Eastern, heavy patchouli. Um, it's really strong, intense, classic 80s scent. And then the Eau de Toilette is basically just lighter and slightly more floral with a carnation note in. Carnation is quite a dated floral note that was used a lot in the 80s and 90s in perfumes. I do have a funny story about opium that um, it was massive in the 80s, um, apparently like heavily advertised, and my dad bought it for my mom as a gift and she hated it so much they both hated it and they gave it away. So it really is one of these really strong perfumes and it smells nothing like black opium. It has nothing in common. I don't know why they use the word opium because it's not remotely similar to black opium. So those are the four different ranges from YSL for women. They do have all these collections, special edition ones that you can get in some high-end department stores, um, but I'm not gonna cover them. Um, but definitely Libre and Black Opium are super popular and they are really good quality fragrances. All of their fragrances do perform really well. Um, I do find that the perfumes that L'Oreal owns do tend to perform really well. I think they use a good amount of fragrance oil in them. So definitely the Libre, Black Opium and Mon Paris are all Soki approved. And there's just a couple which I'm a bit dubious about like the Libre Platine, but they are all good fragrances and I can see why they're so popular. So in terms of discontinued YSL perfumes, so YSL L appears to be discontinued. I'll see if I can find it anywhere and link it down below. But this was a really cute feminine fragrance that lasted and performed well. We had pink pepper, rose and lychee, a combination that we see quite a lot now in things like Parfum de Molly Delina in Very Good Girl from Carolina Herrera. And a patchouli base again. It was a little bit like Mon Paris, but a little bit more fruity. And again, it lasted really well, but I see that's recently been discontinued. As has YSL Paris and Parisienne, the predecessors to Mon Paris. Paris was a floral powdery note um, a little bit dated and then Parisienne was kind of in between original Paris and Mon Paris. It had that fruity berry top note, it had the rose hearts but it didn't quite have like the staying power or the modern feel of Mon Paris which I think is much better but I see that Paris and Parisienne are both removed from the YSL website now um, but again I'll see if I can find them and link them below if you were a fan and you want to get one last bottle. But yeah that's it guys let me know what your favourite is from the current range or the discontinued ones let me know your thoughts I do read all your comments um, but that's it so thanks so much for watching as always and I'll see you in the next video bye